have to see. I know. Go. I'm so I wish sorry you could to stay go. for I'm a little bit. Oils. I'm a little bit suspect. You get your shoe with toilet paper on, and as soon as you do, you get out <laughs> yeah, of here. Get out. It's called moving it's up not the you ladder. Guys, it's me. Most, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Most people leave during this segment. Oh. Oh. You're gonna come back, and when you do, you'll perform for us. Promise. I would love to. We'd love to have you. Right. Pleasure. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. I'll walk you out. Over. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Enjoy your trophy. Thank you. Mark, come back, Mark. Okay. okay, so there are so many different types of oils available these days, but which one do we use to cook what foods with? And here with the answers to all of that is Dan Kohler. Thank That's you right. for clarifying this, Dan Kohler. Yes, indeed. Sorry. When we are shopping for oils these days, there's a plethora, wouldn't you say? Plethora yes. of oils. Cornucopia, and in fact, you will. Oh, cornucopia, I like yeah. that. Now, when you pick an oil, you'll see a lot of times it'll tell you what temperature it's good up to. Over here, this one says it's good up to 445 degrees. So the, the thing we want to talk about mainly is the smoking point. Oils are graded by their smoking point. And do you know what a smoking point is? Yeah. No. When, point at which it when smokes. It starts to there we go. Smoke. When you have that Don't sauce, when you, when you have that saute pan on your stove and it begins to smoke, what's happening is the fat is breaking down into its constituent parts, which are fatty acids. And those fatty acids then become free radicals. They are in the air. And the main one you're smelling is acrolein. Acrolein is the chemical compound that makes things taste burnt or acrid. There's actually a yeah. chemical that leads to that. So when oil is smoking, you then have these nasty flavors that come, by, come about. And the way to avoid that is to use the right oil for the right temperature. So we're going to break is this down. Is it unhealthy to inhale? Yeah. Uh, you certainly wouldn't want to put your face over a smoking. Uh, well, smoking no, but just, you know, because of the residual effects around. Yeah. The In other words, do I have a lawsuit here? No, I've seen, and she has filled this room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can talk. We can talk, talk later. later. Okay. I've got all the evidence. All right. Okay. <laughs> so I break down my oils into three big groups: high heat, medium heat, and no heat at all. Okay. So what I'm talking about high heat, that's this group over here. This is 400 degrees or higher. That's when you're frying. Now, a lot of times you see a, fr a frying recipe says 375 degrees, and you're thinking, well, that's not super hot, right? Yeah. yeah. Except that when you want to hit 375 degrees, you need to bring your oil above that. You need to bring it to about 415 or 425 so that when you put food in that and it drops the temperature down to 375, it's okay. Which means you need oils that can go well above 400 degrees. That's corn, soy, safflower, sunflower, grape seed. Peanut? Uh, Peanut oil is terrific for frying, and the reason these are good for frying is because they've been refined. They have been treated with high heat to remove any impurities, and that's why you can bring them up above 400 degrees. Great, okay. we've, we've tackled it, frying, it, we understand it. it. Got it. Next up, sauteing, because this is realistically what you're doing most days. You, I think we were talking earlier, you don't deep fry every day, right. but you do saute most days. Right. Yes. Right. Now, this is somewhere between 300 and 400 degrees, and, and a lot of people use uh, olive oil a lot of yeah. times. That's what yeah. your, your go-to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of controversy around olive oil, whether you're using extra virgin olive oil or something that just says pure olive oil or first pressed. Or first pressed and what, what do all of those mean? Well, when I'm sauteing, what I like to use is, is a, a, just a pure olive oil or a virgin olive oil, but not extra virgin olive Why oil. Why not? Because extra virgin is, most of these oils up here, are removed from their plants or their nuts or their fruits by mechanical pressing. They use hydraulic presses and they are slowly, slowly, slowly crushed. The oil seeps out. That is an extra virgin process. There's no added heat, there's no added chemical, there's no added filtration. So your extra virgin olive oil, which is what I've got over here, has lots of beautiful flavor compounds. That's why beautiful olive oil actually tends to be a little green. Mm -hmm. Please, by the way, it's dig in. Oh. Dig in. Yeah. You have, from left to right, you have pumpkin seed oil, walnut oil, and pistachio oil. Ooh. Yes. Was uh, was olive oil always Popeye's first choice, or was he more interested <laughs> in? Really, he liked <laughs> that was very funny. Was I, I appreciated that. Thank you. Walnut oil. I do have a question. The different flavors when you cook, like if if I were to deep fry turkey for Thanksgiving, yeah. the recipe called for peanut oil. For me, when I'm looking at my high heat oils, the reason you use these because they've been refined, they have actually very a very neutral flavor profile. Okay. These have these really don't have a lot of character to them, and as we move down to the no heat category, which is what you're all tasting right now, yeah, yeah, just for dipping. Very flavorful. These are so full of flavors, and that's the reason you never want to yeah. heat these. And I, I say under 300 degrees, yeah. you can slightly warm them up, but realistically, but if you, do you just want to walnut drizzle. oil. It right, just, going back to the olive oil, so yes. you should have then two mm. olive oils. You should have just yes. pure olive oil for your sauteing, exactly, and then the extra virgin for. 
for, dip, salad. for dipping and salad dressing. Mm -hmm. So a pure olive oil might have been refined with heat a little more, so it can it can actually withstand a slightly higher heat. And that's what we've got with this coconut oil over here. Sometimes people use coconut oil and they say, I'm tasting coconut in there, right? That's because it is unrefined coconut oil, which I would put in the lower heat category. What you want is a refined oil for cooking. What is this green oil? That one's the uh, pumpkin seed oil. Pumpkin seed. Isn't that beautiful? Well, it's oh, it's nice. lovely. Is there health benefits or to, uh, to different seed. oils? You know, everything, I'd say as we go lower down the scale, the lower, the lower the temperature, the more, um, the more naturally occurring compounds and enzymes are there. So they, these are, I mean, they're healthier. Healthier yeah. than, than the others. Okay. Um, wouldn't you say that the more the flavor, the more nutrients? Those two things normally go together, Indeed, right? this is something Sophie and I talk about a lot. Flavor, for me, is a signifier of nutrition. Oh, yeah. interesting. Oh, oh, wow, that's a good point. That's good. You know what, though? The wall and the, these oils don't last long. No, and if you want to store them, you remember you want to keep them under 70 Ooh. degrees, keep them in a dark place, keep them cool. How long, did, how long can you keep them for, these? Uh, just a couple months, but I keep them in the months? fridge. Okay. okay. And we keep Dan mm -hmm. in our mm -hmm. kitchen always. Yeah. Yeah. You can yeah. go to renegadekitchen.com and you will find him there because he's so smart. <laughs> and we're going to come back and Christina and I are going to face the questions. You. That's right. Face you. Face our family you. has all questions right, right. for us. Next.